All right, we're gonna go over how to convert one of these late model GM trucks to uh, flex fuel if it doesn't have it from the factory. This is an 18 and uh, it did not have the flex fuel capability from the factory. And I'm gonna show you how to do it for about less than $50 worth of parts and uh, using HP tuners. So uh, I'll show you how to install the uh, physical parts first and then I'll make another video on how to do the actual tuning through HP tuners. But uh, it's real easy. All right. Go over this, this is the fuel system. This is a flex fuel uh, diagram here for a vehicle with flex fuel. And if you look at number eight right here, this is the flex fuel sensor. And it mounts about right here somewhere on the inside of this driver's side frame rail. And the non-flex fuel will look exactly the same, basically, except you won't have seven, eight, and nine. It'll just be basically this, with a hose connecting, you know, from basically here to here. And this is this little. These are all steel hard lines right here, and then this right here is a plastic line that actually runs to the fuel pump on the tank. So what we're going to be doing is, since this this truck did not have this sensor here, we're going to splice a sensor in right here. So basically, all we're going to be doing is disconnecting this connector right here and splicing in the sensor. And the pigtail for the wiring is already here, and you don't have to extend it or anything like that. All you got to do is plug it in. And uh, I'll show you how that's how that's done. So that's basically what we're going to do. And I'll show you what parts you're going to need. Basically, three fittings. You're going to need these that are in these packages are not the actual Russell fittings. These are cheap eBay fittings I bought. I suggest. You just go ahead and spring for the rustles. They're not much more. This is where it's uh, penny-wise, pound-foolish type stuff. You just, just get the better stuff. But anyway, you're going to need two of these. Russell's 640853. That's uh, dash 6AN males to 3 8 uh, basically GM fuel barbs. So you're going to need two of those, and then you're going to need a dash 6 coupler. That's, uh, what, 640,000 or 640000 is the coupler. And what you're going to do is, all you do is couple these together. So basically all you have is a splice. And the only reason I did it this way is I could not find a, uh, a plastic hose or a pigtail or anything that would allow me to do this. I looked all over and I couldn't find one that was bent right to make it do it. But this is, you know, I, I think you could probably dig through the GM catalog and find some somewhere. But I think between shipping and, you know, the price that GM gets for their parts, it's probably better off just buying these. This is, like I said, I think this stuff here was... $15, maybe a little, maybe a little more. So that takes care of the actual physical connection. And then you're going to need, of course, the fuel sensor. And this is one I bought. I bought all this stuff off of uh, Amazon. These three female, or these three uh, Russell connectors and the actual fuel sensor itself. And I think this was $25 or so. And it's a, uh, I don't know, I think it's the guy that has the most reviews on Amazon. He doesn't tell you what brand it is, but I will tell you it is a Continental brand, so it's a, you know, it's an OEM quality sensor and it, it works fine. And the reason I bought two sets is I'm going to uh, convert the Yukon also. So, um, so that's all you need. So basically, all you're doing is it's going to look something like this. I'm not going to take them out of the package, but you have this coupler in the middle, this in here, that, and then it will be. I think the sensor's on this side, or maybe it's on this side. But anyway, all you do is plug the sensor in one of these. So it's so basically just it's basically just changing the gender is all you're doing. So I don't know, it make more sense underneath the car. Let me grab a flashlight real quick. All right. All right. So you're gonna go over to your passenger side frame rail to where the front of the gas tank is. Crap, cut the light. All right. So originally from the factory, if you don't have flex fuel, 
you're already going to have the pigtail for the electric connection and that is that uh, brown color connector and if it's not connected to anything it will be plugged in it'll be looped back and plugged in to this little dummy connector right here right back here there's a dummy connector and it doesn't connect to anything it's just to keep water out of it you know because it's a sensor to be just hanging if it wasn't so it's just looped back it's so you're gonna undo that just unplug it and then your actual splice to show you but you can see that this connector is basically the same thing as this as if it's black and not white and this is your steel uh, fuel line with 3 8 bar but up, that's the emissions ones so don't worry about that anyway hope I'm making sense here but there's a connector it's kind of hard to see because it's black color but it was plugged in to this steel rail right here so this was just plugged in here you can see how it's got a the slacks kind of sticking out so you can just imagine that it was connected in here so what you're going to do you just take a little screwdriver unhook that connector you may have to play with it to, to get it unconnected undone and let me flop back and then i don't know if you're going to be able to see but you can see i can unplug this it makes more sense yeah so i got the connector got it unplugged but if you look back in there, I've got a, a uh, you know, that blue color, that's the coupler. That's all they had. They didn't have a black one. And then, of course, there's your, your 3 8 uh, fuel barb going that way. And there's a 3 8 fuel barb going this way, which is actually plugged into the sensor. So all you're doing is splicing in that, that sensor. And, of course, it's, you know, it's just sitting there. It's hanging there. You may have to bend back this little... Um, kind of like a little clip or something that was there because it's kind of in the way but it's real easy just plug it in it's, it's nothing just do it with just uh, regular hand tools no problem so uh, and then you know of course plug in your sensor that you just installed and that's it very 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 easy to do no extending pigtails or anything like that. I've seen some kits around that say you have to extend it in different places, but that's basically it right there. And then the rest of it will be just uh, the actual programming, which is very easy as long as you have access to HP tuners or EF iLive or whatever you have. And I'll try to put that in the next video.